Dave Russell here, and we're going to be doing uh, the session on salvation. This is probably one of my favorite topics. Um, we're going to talk about salvation, what that is, some of the definitions, and um, some things about evangelism. So get ready and open up your notebook in the outline of kingdom identity, and we're going to be talking about salvation. Uh, the first part of this is uh, Jesus' purpose and his mission on earth, um, the things that he did are the things that we're going to do and the things that he commissioned us to do. So if Jesus did it, we can do it. And we've been equipped and commanded to do the same. Uh, the first scripture I'll talk about is uh, John 18. And it says, Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have delivered you to me. And what have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. And Pilate said, Are you a king then? And Jesus answered, Yes, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause, or this purpose, I have come into the world, that I should bear witness of the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So there's a lot of things in this one passage. Um, remember that um, Jesus, his kingdom is not of this world. It's, a, it's the kingdom of heaven and not the kingdom of the devil or the, of this world. And he also says, uh, for this cause, we see that Jesus' purpose and his mission, uh, there are many things, but here he says, um, for this cause I've come into the world that I should... Uh, bear witness of the truth. So Jesus is coming in, bearing witness of the truth. That's one of our jobs, is to bear witness of the truth. Uh, the next verse is Luke 19.10 and it says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. So Jesus, you see in the Gospels, he comes through. He's preaching, teaching, healing, delivering people, raising the dead, and making disciples. So he's seeking and saving that which is lost. 1 John 3, 8 says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So the devil does the oppressing, and Jesus gives life and sets those people free. At, at no time does God give you a sickness to teach you or to punish you or anything like that. God does not do that. He teaches people two ways, through his word and through the spirit. We'll see that a little bit more later. But God only teaches believers through his word and through his spirit. He never gives people sickness or trouble or any of that to teach them. So Jesus was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. So go find, go look for works of the devil. Cancer, sickness, disease, um, mental illness, autism, whatever the, that is, that is a work of the devil to oppress people and we have been sent to set them free. Amen? Alright, one of my favorite scriptures is Acts 10.38 and it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him so we see that Jesus was anointed we're anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power that power that word power means dunamis the ability to do amazing things he went about doing good so doing good is a good thing feeding the homeless, uh, having a food bank, just anything that you can think of is good, that's a good thing. And he healed all, not some, but he healed all those who are oppressed of the devil. So again we see that the devil oppresses, God sets free. In 1 Timothy 2, uh, this, we're going to see that God's will or God's desire is this. For it is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires that all men be saved. So his God's desire is for all men, all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And we're going to see in a minute what that word saved or salvation really means. It means a lot of different things. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man and that man Christ Jesus. Not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Krishna, not Tom Cruise. It is Jesus Christ. He is the mediator between God and man or mankind. All right, so we're going to see the definition of salvation. In Hebrew, the definition for salvation 
and it's the word Yeshua or Jesus and very f several forms of those things. You might hear the word sozo, which is a form of that. And it means a complete healing. God wants us healed spiritually, mentally, physically, all those things. So in Hebrew, it means to remove from danger, oppression, or burden. Deliver from the penalty of sin. Deliverance, help, safety, salvation, victory. And in the Greek, it means pretty much the same thing. Salvation, eternal deliverance, to restore, welfare, prosperity, deliverance, preservation, safety, salvation. So we can kind of see an all-encompassing meaning of the word salvation. A couple of examples of what that is. Because not only does he want you saved, he wants you physically healed, and he wants you mentally healed. And that can encompass a lot of different things. Um, we see in Mark 5:15, uh, if you remember the man who was demon-possessed with a legion, and they came to Jesus and they said, and they saw him who was demon-possessed and had the legion sitting clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. I bet they were. This man who was crazy, doing all kind of crazy stuff, he was clothed and in his right mind. So God wants us saved, healed, delivered in every capacity. Soul, spirit, body. And in Matthew 9, 22, the lady with the issue of blood who touched the hem of uh, his garment, it said he was, she was made well from that hour. And that word made, made well is salvation. Made well, made whole, made complete. So we see a couple, and there's more instances, more times in the Bible where it says... Um, he gives more examples, but God wants us saved, healed, delivered, set free of all, any and all things. Um, so salvation to the spirit is the born again experience. Salvation to the soul is what we would call deliverance. And salvation to the body is, it's, it's physical healing. Quick example, a friend of mine called and uh, his friend was schizophrenic, but she wanted to be saved. She wanted help. And so over the phone, they were many states away, over the phone, uh, she gave her life to the Lord, uh, I presented the gospel to her, obviously, and I got her filled, speaking in tongues, filled with the Holy Spirit. And so she was delivered from schizophrenia, um, mental stuff going on, and also healed of uh, whatever, I forget what she was healed of, but physically. So that in a very short amount of time, it was probably five or ten minutes, that this lady was healed of whatever demons were uh, possessing her and causing her schizophrenia, any mental disease, autism, uh, Down syndrome, all those things, it's still a form of the devil oppressing somebody, no matter how they got it, whether they're born with it or whatever. So um, just say in Jesus' name, I command you out autism, I command you out schizophrenia, devil, go in Jesus' name. Mean it and do it and don't back down and the person will be saved and delivered. So, and she was. It took about five or ten minutes. So that was just a classic case of uh, someone getting born again, getting filled with the Spirit, and being delivered spiritually in the Spirit, in the soul, and in the body all at once. All right. A couple more, and we'll, uh, we'll transition to, a, a, to evangelism. But a few more on what salvation is. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 16, it talks about this. Um, Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, raise your hand if you're in Christ, you are, or he is, a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things, not some things, all things, have become new. We're going to, we're going to talk about a little bit later um, how you have been killed, buried, risen up with Christ, and see it in the right hand of, of the Father. That's your position. So Christianity, Christianity is not just a band-aid. It a, it's a death, burial, and resurrection. So the old you, whoever that was, has been killed and buried. And you have raised up as a new creation in Christ. So old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Uh, to con continue on. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So you and I have the ministry of reconciliation. Not necessarily of healing, not necessarily of deliverance, not necessarily of anything else, but to, to reconcile people back to God, whether it's through their spirit, being born again, deliverance, the soul, or the body, in Jesus' name. 
For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses upon them, and has committed us, committed to us the word of reconciliation. And last verse for now, Colossians 2.10, And you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. So spiritually you are complete, you're righteous, you're holy. God's not going to do anything more to your spirit. You have to work on your soul. And also he is the head of principality and power. There's a term flying around a lot where it says new level, new devil. It doesn't matter because your position is in the heavenly places over all principality and power. So say you are going up in the Lord or whatever. I'm not sure I have, how that works. Um, so if there are new devils, they're still under your feet. They're still defeated. So, Amen. All right, part two coming up. All right, welcome to part two of this, and this is uh, the actual part on evangelism. So we heard about salvation, how every, uh, how God desires every person to be saved, um, spirit, soul, and body completely. So evangelism, just a definition, is to herald, to preach, uh, to announce publicly and with conviction or persuasion. So the more the more bold you are, the more conviction. Uh, that really comes from just knowing who you are in Christ and um, just that boldness comes from the power of the Holy Spirit so it just is developed it's um, practiced a lot so if you're not comfortable with witnessing the people there's many many ways of doing it and we'll talk about a few of those uh, but just getting over the fear you're gonna have a little bit of fear uh, just do it anyway and the more you do it the more it just becomes easier and easier and you have more conviction and more boldness so just go out and do it. All right, um, Romans 10, 14. Talks about, um, about preachers, about hearing the word of God. It um, goes, how then shall they call on him and who have they have not believed? How shall they believe in him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings, of good things so you can look at your feet and say I got beautiful feet because your body your body is carrying the gospel to people um, so that it's a beautiful thing God takes a lot of pleasure in you preaching the gospel sharing witnessing praying for people he goes on to say how have they not obeyed but they have not all obeyed for Isaiah says Lord who has believed our report and then Paul says so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God uh, this is sometimes taken out of context, especially here in America, where you think you have to have a level of faith. You keep hearing and get faith. You keep hearing and get faith. Uh, we have all the faith that we're going to get. You just need to make that faith more effective. Uh, it's not quantity, it's quality. So don't think you need more faith. Uh, you have, if, you have, if you just believe in Jesus, then you have the faith of a mustard seed and that's plenty to move mountains and do awesome stuff so don't think about you need more faith that you keep hearing the word keep hearing the word keep in there hearing the word and somehow this faith is building and building and building that's not the right way to look at it because this verse is actually speaking about when preachers go preach and go witness people here they have faith and that's how they get born again faith comes by hearing faith in what faith in Jesus so he's talking about preaching and witnessing to unbelievers. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So people need to hear the Word of God and then have faith or believe in Jesus Christ. As a believer, you just need to make the faith that you have more effective. And we'll talk about that more in discipleship and my renewal. And I'm going to share something that um, when you do go out and preach, you can read the whole thing in Luke chapter 10. You're probably very familiar with it, but Jesus sends the seven day out to the villages and you can either preach the word first or get people healed or you can get people healed and then preach the word it doesn't matter it's all part of salvation uh, so whatever you want to do but in this case uh, Jesus sends out the 70 and they return this is verse 17 and the 70 return with joy saying Lord even the demons submit to us in your name and Jesus said I know I watched Satan fall from heaven like a lightning flash. Look, I've given you authority over the trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing will ever harm you. And don't rejoice at this, but rejoice that your name is written in the book of heaven. What I want to point out is 
when they went into these towns, into these villages, and this happens to us, when you go into your city or town, wherever you're going, wherever you go preaching the word, witnessing, sharing, healing the sick, raising the dead, what is happening is you're dislodging Satan out of the heavenlies. Jesus said, I know you did these things because I saw Satan fall out of the heavens. This is true spiritual warfare. True spiritual warfare is evangelism, demonstrating God's power, and getting people born again, delivered, set free, etc. That is true spiritual warfare. So I just wanted to point that out to give you an encouragement of going out and witnessing and the power that has and how that just that kicks out the devil in that town, that region, or whatever. Amen? Alright, so 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Reconciliation is all those things. Spirit, mind, soul, body. All those things need to be healed and reconciled back to God. What I want to point out is an ambassador. An ambassador does not speak on their own authority or their own opinion. An ambassador goes in the name of a kingdom or a name of a country and speaks for that leader, the king, the president, whoever it is. They don't have their own opinion. They're going to speak the will of the president or the king no matter what. And so we are the same thing. We are to speak as Jesus spoke, the will of God, things like that. If someone sent, you know, asked me about homosexuality, I can't have an opinion. I have to tell them what the Bible says. The Bible says X, Y, and Z. I don't get to share what I personally think. I personally think it's a sin, that people need to be healed, delivered, and set free from those things. It's an abomination, all those things. Um, but even if I had a different, you know, if you go to another church and they are accepting of the gay lifestyle, that's not a true church because they're not presenting a true word of uh, you know God's character, God's likeness, God's will. So one thing to... One thing, one thing to think about is, as an ambassador, you have, you're, you're trusted, you're respected, and you're believed in to speak on God's behalf. Uh, Paul says this all through his, um, all through his letters. So, you're an ambassador, and your ministry is reconciliation. All right, Second Timothy four two, it says, preach the word. It's very loud when he says it. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, extort. Not extort, extort. <laughs> With all patience and teaching. So you have to be ready in season, out of season. Any, at any time you can be called on to preach the gospel, to preach the word or witness. So, all right, Romans 1, 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. And so Paul's not ashamed. We shouldn't be ashamed. Jesus wasn't ashamed. Um, it's the power of God to salvation. So when you're speaking God's word, there's power in there. There's faith in there. There's a lot of things going on uh, that when you are exercising your right to speak and, and witness to people, powerful things going on. When I was very young, we went to the D.C. area, I think, to see the Smithsonian Museums. And I remember to this day that a guy was on the sidewalk with a, um, like a picket sign almost, but it had a scripture. I remember seeing his face. I can see his face right now. And the scripture was, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. He wasn't out there being bold, necessarily. He wasn't out there yelling. He was just sharing the gospel and, and sharing what was on that little sign. There's power in this. It's stuck to me to this day. I, I can see his face. I can remember everything. Because when you're, the word of God has that power, has the power of salvation in it. And so um, no matter what you share, how you share, do it in love, it's going to stick with those people that hear that. So I love being like in an elevator and giving like a 30 second gospel message. It is, it's wild because they're going to, they, they can't go anywhere. They're going to, they're going to hear those words and probably go to sleep seeing my face and hear the words that I had to say. So um, just be creative in how you share the gospel. Um, it's, there's no real one way to do it. Um, God's made us all with a certain personality and way of doing that. So just the, the point is, go out, don't be ashamed, be loving, uh, demonstrate God's kingdom, and, and tell people about Jesus. Amen? All right, and this is, the next verse is, is how, how people are truly saved. You do want to see the fruit in the life, but Romans 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart 
that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes on the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So they can believe in their heart, but they have to confess also that Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 says, For which I suffer trouble as an for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, so that also they may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So he's just saying he's he's going, no matter what people say about him, he's uh, he's going forward with the word of God. The word of God cannot be chained. And the Holy Spirit cannot be chained either. either. I praise God. I'm almost done. First John 5, 12. For he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. Uh, this can go for with uh, witnessing to pretty much anybody, but I specifically with Muslims. Uh, Muslims do not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They don't believe he um, was born of a Virgin Mary. They don't believe he was crucified. They don't believe he was raised from the dead. All those things. So this is one of the scriptures I pull out a lot of times when I'm talking to Muslims. Um, so I'm saying, I, I tell them, you know, Muhammad didn't die on a cross. Uh, Jesus did. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. Do you have the Son? And it's very convicting and a, a good way to break the ice into uh, there is sin in the world. Who is the Savior? Um, and that kind of thing. And later I'll do a video on how to talk to different types of people. It's very basic and how to do it really it boils down to is was Jesus who he said he was and is there sin in the world it's pretty pretty easy so if there's sin in the world then we need a savior all right second Corinthians 5 1 knowing therefore the terror or the reverence the awesomeness of the Lord we persuade men so Paul is saying the day of the day of the Lord is coming um, he's an awesome holy reverent God, so we, we are persuading men. He was, he was a chief evangelist and apostle pushing the kingdom, pushing the, um, the kingdom of God. So uh, there's, there's several reasons for it. One is that people are dying. People are, are not, they don't hear the word of God. So it's very important um, that you and I go out there and we witness. Uh, I'm not saying every single day, but there's plenty of opportunity to go out there uh, um, in your neighborhood, when you're shot, any, anywhere. I don't have to tell you when. It's just, it's all over the place, especially in this day and age. Uh, people need to hear. They need to see the demonstration of God's power and uh, for them to be set free. So just an encouragement uh, to understand salvation and an encouragement to understand uh, you, they, they can't hear without you. They're not going to believe without you. Um, they, they need to hear the word of God. They need to see Jesus in a physical person who is you. And um, if they don't hear, then they can't get saved. And if, if people aren't sent out, then how can anybody hear a preacher? So we've been sent, we've been equipped, we've been given the authority and power of Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit to be able to preach with boldness uh, and set the captives free. So, amen. Um, that's just a short, sweet salvation evangelism uh, lesson. I'll do more on evangelism probably in a bit. That was this lesson. So have a great week. Peace out.